just finishing up my 1994 Ford E350 ambulance conversion. Yes, it's a 7.3 liter diesel, and I am so excited to be getting on the road here soon. So this is part one of part two. I'm almost done, so part two will be coming soon. Uh, part one, I'll be showing you how I got from a run-down looking mobile dog grooming business that had holes in the roof, dog fur in every single corner you could possibly imagine. How I went from that to this little beast right there. First, I'd love to talk a little bit about uh, my inspiration. Almost a decade ago, I was working on a cotton farm in Australia. While I was there, um, managed to get to go around to some of the great sites like the Great Ocean Road, the Great Barrier Reef, uh, Sydney Opera House, and all that stuff. And when locals would ask, hey, where have you been, what have you done? I would say, oh, I've done all these things. And the response usually was, oh yeah, I've been meaning to do that, but I just haven't gone around to it. And that really struck me. Because my first reaction was like, well, how, well, how have you not gone and done these things? It's right in your backyard. And then I realized that I live on the west coast of the United States and I have never gone to the Grand Canyon, haven't done like all these amazing things in the US. And it's time to do it. If I don't do it now, when am I gonna do it? All right, well, let's take a look at this side. So, as you can tell by that there, this used to be a dog groomer. Mobile dog grooming. So that's why you had a lot of stuff kind of set up already. Um, so, super dirty. I mean, look at all that hair. Look at all that hair. Oh my god. A lot of work to be done. <laughs> also don't really like how the, uh, solar just kind of sticks out um, in the back I already got all this electrical set up and around to the front yeah another thing they put these things on to cover up where the lights were and they're just so ugly uh, when I get it painted I'm gonna see if maybe there's a cleaner way to do that but I also definitely want to put in some lights Maybe some KC lights up front, that would be pretty sick. Yeah, definitely you want to go with the gray color for everything and then maybe like a black for all the grills. Um, yeah, I just really like the look of that, especially with these tires. I mean, just look at those tires, but definitely need, need to get this <laughs> fixed or something. Something new going on there when I get a new spare. All right, well, taking apart the... Uh, sink area look at how much hair there is Ooh, okay well uh well used dog groomer I think at any stage, there's a moment, well, there's multiple moments of, um, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. Just realize how much I need to actually be planning right now in terms of what um, the van layout is gonna be, what electrical I'm using, all that stuff. So it actually, there's, <laughs> There's so much planning that needs to go in before you can actually do a whole lot of work. But I'm back out here and at least getting some of that old electrical out and trying to get this pretty stripped down so that I can start implementing those plans. So today, this is what I've done. Yeah, so that's my first big goal is to get out all the batteries and the electrical so that then I can remove this, this whole unit. Um, then secondary would be try and get this lower cabinet off um, and then get the old floor 
gross old floor up. So this is what I've, I've done today. Finally got all those cabinets out. And all the insulation that's behind there. So that's exciting. So one thing that's been really challenging is um, how do I get that off without damaging the roof roof? Because the lights don't actually seem to be going into anything besides just this plastic um, roof topper. Um, ceiling plastic ceiling we'll go with that um so i started a little bit on that and uh using this bad boy um you know got some stuff done but it's kicking up so much dust i'm just not into it right now <laughs> i'll deal with that later so i decided well there's that air conditioner heater unit so this is what i just did <laughs> I can't get it undone, <laughs> so I just cut it out. <laughs> so now I have that, so that's cool. Making progress. <laughs> day here working on the van um i just grabbed my phone to start recording some stuff i haven't been <laughs> recording a whole lot today um because a really magical thing happened um <clears throat> as i was working on the van a butterfly flew inside and the last like nine months since uh, since my mom my mom passed away i've been kind of looking for signs of uh yeah, she's thinking about me and just feeling connected to her and uh, that was pretty cool um, don't know if it was her if it was coincidence if it was my grandma because butterflies is definitely my grandma's thing but I choose to take as a as a sign that I'm doing what uh, I need to be doing that you know they prove they're proud of me that they're happy for me they love me um yeah so yeah i guess uh <laughs> if you ever have those moments of uh seeing something in it, it it triggers something some sort of connection you know whether it's it's real or it's perceived it's uh it can be beautiful and um just want to share that Finally got the shell out. Um, <laughs> giant mess, but at least got it got to the point where I can start working on everything. What a mess! Oh my god! Why is my light blinking? Oh. 
so nice to get close to starting from scratch. <laughs> so much work just to start from scratch. So we're getting our subfloor put in, have the insulation down on the floor, the noise insulation on the sidewalls, and I'm ready to go with the rest of the build. Let's do this. Thanks for watching part one featuring the teardown. Now that I have a clean slate, I'll show you what I've done to build the cabinets, map everything out, butcher block, plumbing, uh, bed, windows, all that jazz. Stay tuned.